the end of the Edinburgh Harmonica Workshop 2017. It's Woo! been great fun. <laughs> We've got through another one. Um, for anyone who hasn't been, perhaps you could say a little bit about what we've been doing and okay. what's so great about it. All right, okay, so first things first, you're coming to Edinburgh, one of the most beautiful cities on the planet. And then there are four of us teaching and we always get awesome teachers like Liam and David Barrett, Will Wilde. And basically we take harmonica players of all levels, like complete beginners. We had one guy who's only been playing for a week who was here and he had an awesome time. And we had like more advanced seasoned players and we teach a variety of workshops uh, to groups of you know, 20, 25 students. And you get to have a, a whole kind of different array of tastes of harmonica playing and teaching from all of, all of us. And we all have a different way of thinking about it. So that's the kind of the formal education side of things. And then we do concerts. So we do concerts with all the teachers. And then we do jam sessions with all of the students and the teachers and killer house bands and then there are acoustic jam sessions and probably the most important thing is you meet other harmonica players and other harmonica students and you you make friends but then you also start kind of vibing off each other and you inspire each other and uh, that's kind of what what the edinburgh uh, harmonica workshop weekend is all about it's just people who are in love with the instrument just getting excited about it and getting uh, in a bit of momentum to kind of keep them going throughout the, the winter months. <laughs> so, I'm not going to say single-handedly, but you've organised this whole thing yourself mm -hmm. and you don't seem to stop. Where do you get your passion for teaching the harmonica? <laughs> <laughs> teaching someone harmonica is, is quite a long-term thing. You know, if, if, it can be a very short-term thing. Some people have one lesson and realise that it's not for them. But... If someone's really into the instrument, then it's going to be a decent amount of time before they get to a stage where um, they're self-sufficient. They might not be an amazing player, but at least they can kind of keep going by themselves. And so if, if what I love doing is I love taking them for that first step, that first leg of the journey, which might be anything up to a year or two or three, and just being able to see that someone who doesn't even know which way round to hold the harmonica. Some of us still don't know which way round to hold the harmonica. <laughs> <Not sure. laughs> still working on that one. Yeah. Uh, and like going from that to then going up on stage and, and just that look of pure and utter joy at the realization that music is super democratic. You know, anyone can do it and you can all get up on stage and play. And being able to be part of that journey for someone is, is so invigorating. It just it completely fuels everything I do, because um, that that's what I love. You know, I, I I enjoy playing, but I really love teaching and kind of helping people as much as I can at that point, sort of kind of getting started. One of the things I love about the the uh, harmonica workshop in Edinburgh is that you've got this YouTube channel. You know, you we both know what it's like to teach mm -hmm. on YouTube, and you've got that that there's, there's always a bit of a distance, even if you're interacting as much as possible, but then getting people in a room together, people you might otherwise have never met, mm -hmm. is such a wonderful feeling. Is that a conscious thing behind organizing something like this, bringing people together? Totally, totally. So that, that, that's kind of the main thing. So I, I have students all over the world, and I love that. I, I teach them on Skype. Some of them I teach by correspondence, so I don't ever actually see them playing but they send me audio recordings and then I give them feedback. And pigeon mail. Pigeon mail. It's, <laughs> it's insane. And, and it's so cool. But actually getting to see people like that in the flesh or people who've just been sending me emails, you know, who, who've never even come for lessons and they come and I see them and they're like, man, you're a lot taller than I thought you were going to be. Or, you know, that you have these pictures in your head about these people and then suddenly you realize that, that there's this huge like network of, of cool connections that you have. You have friends all over the world. So being able to visualize that by actually being in a room with someone is a very special experience for me. Mm -hmm. uh, even if I wasn't playing harmonica, I just, you know, I don't want this weekend to end uh, as tired as I am. <laughs> it's, like, it's like you have a, a, a big extended family, and that's kind of cool. You know, last year when we had Christelle Berton, mm -hmm. 
when I met her, she said, you know, you're more handsome in real life. <laughs> so, you know, if you think I'm really ugly, I'm not. <laughs> you just need to come to the next workshop. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a little bit about your playing. What makes a, a great harmonica player and what are you working towards when you're, you're trying to make music? What are the things that you really value? What are the things that I really value? Uh, I, I think the most important thing uh, in my mind, which is something that I really struggle with, but is trying to service the song. Because um, I, I think as soon as you go up on stage, and I definitely suffer from this, there's an element of, I want to go up there and I want to show everyone what my chops are. Especially if I'm going up on stage and you know there's Liam in the audience or there's Will Wilde in the audience or you know last year, Adam Gusso, this year, David, but you know, all these kind of, these are people that I look up to. And so I get up on stage and, and all of my tasty kind of restrained, classy playing goes out the window and I'm just like, ah, I gotta, I gotta show them that I've got all the chops and I, I'm gonna throw in some overblows because those guys don't really use them and I'll be like, yeah, look at me. Um, and that's not what I like about them. I really hate that. Um, so that's what, what I'm working towards is that kind of level of restraint, not, not where I'm stilted, but, but where I'm, I'm just kind of servicing the song and it's not, it's not about me trying to kind of be flashy, it's about me adding something. Because harmonica is one of these, these great instruments where it can kind of assume any role in a band. It's percussive, it's rhythmic, so it can do the kind of chugging thing and be very chordal, uh, but it's also an amazing lead instrument. Um, so you, you have to know what your role is at any given time and you need to assume that role. So sometimes you're just gonna, you're gonna pretend to be a horn section and you know, you'll be doing kind of that kind of thing and that's not really showing off anything at all about what I can do on the instrument or what you know anyone can do on the instrument but a lot of the time that little extra thing it's really tasty that might be more appropriate than twiddling away doing something really fancy yeah so if you kind of and there's a singer singing and there's a guitarist <laughs> taking a solo people would be like who is this guy yeah. <laughs> so just kind of that's what I would really love to be able to do uh, and kind of play a, a more accompanying role. Actually, that, that's the thing that I think is hardest on harmonica, is being a good accompanist. Um, it's it, relatively easy to be a good soloist on a harmonica because it's, it's kind of set up that way. Uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of people out there have discovered that the four draw is pretty awesome. <laughs> it's pretty useful, that one. Yeah, there, you yeah. can just... And yeah, it's what, it's what we call a wailing note. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, being able to kind of follow a chord progression and uh, support a song, mm. I, I, that's what I'm working towards. Yeah. And, and chord progressions that aren't one, four, and five. <laughs> and of course, that stuff we've, we've worked on this weekend. We've talked, there have been workshops about accompanying, there's been stuff about soloing, but hopefully there's been something on offer for everyone in, mm. in that regard. So yeah. it's been really cool. And, Picking up on you saying about you know feeling nervous around other other players and other teachers, we had a jam session this afternoon and I went for a you know me and Tomlin and a group full of people and I went for a three draw semitone bend and it came out as some sound I've I've not got in about five years <laughs> and I thought you get those moments where you think what was that and, then, and it and it's nice and it's one of the great things about these events is it is humbling in that way you go. You know, you can sit and make your YouTube videos and people give you nice comments, but it's lovely, mm -hmm. in a way, to, to be brought back to earth and, and meet people and it's all human and say, you know what, we're all along the same road. We're all working towards the same goals. Let's help each other. Yeah, absolutely. I actually just, I had, I had quite a funny anecdote happened in one of my classes. So we're looking at, at kind of starting improvising. And, and when I get people to start improvising, I get them to start playing a two draw over a 12 bar blues. Because it sounds fine over everything. And, and I, I stupidly said, see, you can play an excellent 12-bar blues solo with one note. And I played a 12-bar blues solo, and I was giving it all the... And I got through to the end of the 12-bar blues, and someone in the class said, that wasn't excellent. <laughs> it, was, oh. <laughs> it was brilliant absolutely brilliant moment and, and, and it yeah, did knock me sideways yeah. slightly <laughs> your next YouTube lesson might be more humble yeah uh, definitely <laughs> look out <laughs>